Have you ever felt lost trying to figure out the right price of an unusual item in TF2? There's thousands of combinations that exist and it's very difficult to price check them even if they already have a backpack.tf price. I remember when I first started trading from 2017 to 2019, I was enslaved to those backpack.tf prices and completely avoided unpriced items from when I watched those old trading guides. This resulted in me either selling an item way too quickly or losing potential profits or being stuck with an item for weeks that I thought would sell fast. I knew there had to be a way to distinguish a rough price for each item if the high tier traders could. What if what I'm doing is wrong and what if there were some patterns I could use to become a pro at price checking? Imagine fumbling all of your unusual purchases because you still believe in the backpack.tf price, you still believe in quick sell percentages, and you still believe in avoiding unpriced items. And if you don't step outside of your comfort zone to learn these simple things, best case scenario, your profit margins will realistically be cut in half by the end of the year. So it was when I joined various Discord servers in late 2019 that I would rarely get the opportunity to chat with experienced traders about price checking items, but they gave me really valuable tips that are still relevant today. I employed various tips and tactics they taught me into my unusual trading, and even though I bought unusuals above the backpack.tf price, or even bought an unusual item with sellers at the same price, which sounds ridiculous to do, I made so much more profit. Imagine having a very trained price checking eye, and as soon as you look at an item, you already have an accurate prediction of what it would sell for in your head, and you don't need to ask for a second opinion from anyone else. The truth is, you can profit off anything if you know what it can sell for. And right now I'm going to reveal to you the secrets nobody will tell you in unusual trading for price checking items. Number one, backpack.tf prices are suggestions. In the bustling TF2 market, backpack.tf prices offer a starting point rather than a definitive verdict. These figures are supposed to represent the community's consensus on an item's worth based on submitted evidence of trades. Here's a deeper dive into why reliance on these prices alone might mislead. TF2's economy is anything but static. Factors like game updates, community preferences, and shifts in supply and demand can all influence an item's price. A price that was accurate yesterday might not hold today. Prices on backpack.tf are aggregated from community submissions, meaning they're essentially suggestions rather than strict rules as the name suggests. They serve as a benchmark or a starting point for negotiations, requiring traders to look beyond these numbers for a comprehensive understanding of an item's current market value. When dealing with unpriced items, outdated prices, or even freshly updated listings, it's essential to approach with caution. The market's volatility can render these prices obsolete overnight. And that means if you have an unpriced item, this uncertainty can be even greater, demanding a nuanced approach to pricing that considers more than just historical data. Ultimately, the TF2 economy is governed by the community's willingness to pay. Valve plays no part in setting these prices, leaving the market to dictate value. This means that an item is worth precisely what someone else is prepared to exchange for it. Let me repeat what I just said. All TF2 items are worth what someone else is willing to pay for it. This means making personal opinions on value less relevant in the broader market context. And if you can understand what the backpack.tf price really is, you'll make much more accurate price checks and inform trading decisions. Number two, the gold mine of unpriced unusuals. Unpriced unusuals are often perceived as a treacherous territory a notion that I found to be a myth more than reality. Here's why embracing unpriced unusuals can be your ticket to significant profits in TF2 trading. The general aversion towards unpriced or newly released items sets up a perfect playground for savvy traders. While others shy away, you get a broader market to yourself. The absence of a set in stone price paves the way for high volatility, allowing you to secure items at lower prices and sell them at a premium. This scenario can potentially set you up as the trendsetter for the item's market value on platforms like Backpack.tf. You can be the first sale. New items, particularly following updates or the release of new crates, come with their own set of challenges. Initial prices are likely to adjust, which is often a decrease as the market stabilizes. To mitigate risks associated with these fluctuations, you have to absolutely buy these items at a significantly lower price. The goal is to sell quickly, not holding out for long-term gains, to capitalize on the initial market excitement. When venturing into the realm of unpriced unusuals, exercising caution is definitely paramount. The lack of a reference price means you need to be particularly astute in evaluating the item's potential market value. This involves understanding the item's appeal, the demand within the community, and the general trends of similar items. If the prospect of pricing unpriced unusuals seems daunting, Fear not, the following steps will delve you into practical steps that will derive a fair market value for these items, ensuring you make informed purchasing decisions and obviously more profit. 
If you take action from this video, unpriced unusuals transform from a high risk endeavor to a lucrative opportunity. With the right approach and mindset, you can exploit the market's hesitance to your advantage. Number three, sister effect price checking. Valve's approach to making unusual effects in TF2 can be seen as creatively economical. Many of the effects are just essentially clones of each other, sporting different color variations. This characteristic unveils a strategic avenue for price checking. Acknowledge that Valve recycles unusual effects with mere color variations. This redundancy is your ally in, in determining the market value of an unusual hat. By identifying an effect's sister effect, you can gauge a more accurate price point for your item. What you need to do is engage in a comparative analysis between the item you're interested in and its sister effect. You're looking for discrepancies in prices, sale history, and the number of sellers in the market. A significant price gap between sister effects can serve as a red flag or a green light for your purchasing decisions. For instance, you're eyeing, you're eyeing up a North Star Wanderer's Wool for 75 keys. There is no information on the backpack.tf price page because it's so new. No sellers, no supply data, yet no sales. No indications of a price. So you check for a sister effect called Prettiest Star. You then see two sellers matched at 70 keys that have been there for two weeks. Chances are, if Prettiest Star couldn't get 70 keys and North Star looks pretty much the same as Prettiest Star, how are you supposed to expect to get more than 75 keys out of that purchase? And even though two weeks is not that long, considering that they're new, they're probably going to go down in price over time and it's going to be very hard to sell or profit. In instances where a sister effect doesn't exist, rely on tier comparisons among effects. Purple energy and sunbeams, for example, often orbit in the same price tier. If purple energy is notably cheaper than sunbeams, it might indicate a market undervaluation or oversupply. Conversely, if Disco Beatdown is priced similarly to green energy, caution is advised. Green energy's market performance historically outshines Disco Beatdown, making it an unfavorable comparison for purchase or investment. This method, while effective, does hinge on accumulating experience and market knowledge. Over time, you'll develop an intuitive grasp of effect tiers and their relative market values, enhancing your ability to make informed decisions on the fly. This really means that you should be collecting experience under your belt. Quality isn't always better than quantity. An example of this is on the first day of class, a professor at the University of Florida divided his film beginning photography students into two groups. Everyone on the left side of the classroom, he explained, would be in the quantity group. They would be graded solely on the amount of work they produced. On the final day of class, he would tally the number of photos submitted by each student. 100 photos would rate an A, 90 photos a B, 80 photos a C, and so on. Meanwhile, everyone on the right side of the room would be in the quality group. They would be graded solely on the excellence of their work. They would only need to produce one photo during the entire semester, but to get an A, it had to be nearly perfect. At the end of the term, he was surprised to find that all the best photos were produced by the quantity group. During the semester, these students were busy taking photos, experimenting with composition and lighting, testing out various methods in the darkroom and learning from their mistakes. In the process of creating hundreds of photos, they honed their skills. Meanwhile, the quality group sat around speculating about perfection. In the end, they had little to show for their efforts other than unverified theories and one mediocre photo. The same goes for TFD trading. If you don't take action to build experience, but rather try to consume a bunch of knowledge beforehand, you can only expect mediocre results at best. By meticulously comparing sister effects and understanding tier equivalences, you can navigate the unusual market with greater confidence and precision. Number four, arbitrage price checking. For those instances where sister effect price checking doesn't cut it, or when you're on the hunt for more comprehensive data, arbitrage price checking is your next level strategy. This technique, in short, just means you're going beyond one platform such as backpack.tf and onto more sites to price check items. The core of arbitrage price checking lies in diversifying your research across multiple trading platforms and websites. Backpack.tf serves as a starting point, but it's not the be all and end all. For a well-rounded perspective, delve into sales data on marketplace.tf, manco.store, and other notable trading sites. These platforms might hold key transactions that backpack.tf doesn't capture, offering you a clearer picture of the market dynamics at play. For those with backpack.tf premium access, the ability to track item histories becomes an invaluable asset. This feature allows you to effectively become a price suggester. Analyzing past sales yourself to deduce a fair market price. 
Learning how to effectively utilize this tool can significantly elevate your trading game. And resources like the backpack.tf forums or Discord can be great places to start. Sometimes the best resource at your disposal is the collective wisdom of the trading community. If your research hits a wall, don't hesitate to reach out to fellow traders on Discord or the backpack.tf forums for a second opinion. A fresh set of eyes can provide new insights or confirm your suspicions, reinforcing your price check with community validated information. If you're able to employ a combination of sister effect comparisons, multi-platform research and community engagement, you can expect to equip yourself with the most accurate understanding of an item's worth. Now the last point is one that I honestly don't do enough of. Number five, trusting your instincts. When navigating the complex waters of TFT trading, it's crucial to remember that not all opportunities are created equally. The ability to decide when to engage and when to step back is a skill, is a skill honed over time, often guided by a combination of knowledge, experience, and yeah, gut feeling. The principle of avoiding certain items isn't about fear of risk, but rather an, an acknowledgement of market realities. In situations where the market is inflated or where competition is fierce, even a perfectly priced item might only offer marginal profit margins. It's in these instances that discretion becomes your best ally, choosing to pass on deals that don't meet your profit criteria. While trading in TF2 is not largely a numbers game, there's an intangible element that shouldn't be ignored, which is your intuition. If something feels off about a deal, or if an opportunity seems too good to be true, it's worth taking a moment to listen to that internal voice. Just as in real life, gut feelings can be life-saving. In trading, it could be the difference between a massive pitfall or an opportunity for massive profit. The most telling sign that it's time to rely on your gut is when you're faced with a decision that analytics alone can't resolve. Your trading instincts are shaped by every deal you've made, every loss you've encountered, and every success story you've crafted. In summary, while tools, data, and strategies from the backbone of successful trading, the element of human intuition plays a non-negligible role. By understanding when to engage, when to pass, and when to trust your gut, you elevate your trading beyond mere transactions to a more nuanced and potentially profitable art form. Remember, the market is dynamic and your adaptability, informed by both data and instinct, is key to navigating it successfully. Now it's time to summarize my tactics. Backpack.tf as a guideline. Remember prices listed on Backpack.tf are starting points, not absolutes. The TF2 market is dynamic, with values fluctuating based on actual transactions and demand. Always treat these prices as suggestions rather than hard rules. Unpriced unusuals offer opportunity. Contrary to popular belief, unpriced unusuals aren't necessarily a risk, but an opportunity for those willing to do their homework. With fewer traders competing, you can often secure these items at a steal and set the market price yourself. Sister effect comparisons. To gorge an item's potential value, compare it with its sister effects or similar items within the same tier. This can provide a clearer picture of its market standing and help avoiding overpaying for less desirable effects. Arbitrage price checking. Don't limit your research to one source. Utilize various marketplaces and community inputs to gather a comprehensive view of an item's value. This broader perspective can reveal opportunities and sales missed by others. Heeding your instincts. Finally, don't underestimate the power of your gut feeling, especially in ambiguous situations. Your accumulated trading experience can guide you toward the right decisions. Sometimes the best deal is the one you don't make. And there you have it. Mastering the art of price checking in TF2 is about blending data, market trends, comparative analysis, and your own trading intuitions. You're setting yourself up for success in the volatile world of unusual trading when you apply these principles. Remember that every trade is a learning opportunity and every decision is a step closer to mastering the market. If you found these insights helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more TFT trading tips and strategies Drop a comment below with your own price checking experiences or any topics you'd like covered in the future videos. Happy trading and see you in the next video.